All right. <clears throat> you know, you see a cross right here. Well, that is part of the Christmas message. Because Jesus' coming was great. But if he hadn't gone to the cross, we'd still be lost in our sins. This is a picture of uh, God told Abraham, go out and count the stars if you can. You, you, there's no way to count them. But yet God knows the name of every star. He's named every star. God is an awesome God. Now, this, this is just a, a small portion of it. I wish I had Louis Giglio here to explain and give you a, a broad picture of what's going on. I like what, uh, what Louis Giglio said. He says, he, he shows all of the galaxies and he shows this little dot and it's the earth. And he says, I'd have to amplify it just so you can see that that's actually the earth among all of this vast uh, mass of stars and all. And he says, I'm not trying to make you feel small and insignificant. I want to let you know you're small and insignificant. <laughs> but in God's eyes, in God's eyes, David said, what is man that you are mindful of man? Who am I that you're... Seven billion people on the earth. Who am I that God is mindful of me? Now, I, I kind of think in one dimension. You know, and we have... We have three-dimensional printers and things like that. But my mind, my mind is, you know, this is the first heaven. All right, here's the first heaven. Then the second heaven is right above that. Then the third heaven is above that. Well, if, let me, let me explain it like this. Now, if the first heaven is here, all these people on the North Pole, they're in good shape. What about these people down here? Well, the first heaven is round. See? It's round. So everybody on earth can see the first heaven. Well, what about the second heaven? Well, it's above that, and it's bigger because it's around all of the first heaven. What about the third heaven? The third heaven is like God's throne is in the third heaven. And I limit God by thinking, well, you know, here's the third heaven, a little, a little piece right there. But it's like, you know how big the, the, the third heaven is? From eternity to eternity. That's, that's the third heaven. That's the third heaven. Now, if you could imagine that I had a saw and I could saw through the third heaven, the second heaven, the first heaven. Let me show you just an example of that. It looks like a donut, right? This right here, this hole in the middle, that's the first heaven. Inside of that first heaven is the earth, that little dot that you can't see up here, you can't, you wouldn't, you'd have to magnify, you'd have to have a magnifying glass the size of this room just to magnify this where we could see the earth on there. And now we're caught up in our own world, you know, and all seven billion of us are thinking, I'm the only one on this earth that matters in this great universe, you know, I need an audience with God. Where is God? Why won't he answer my prayer? Yeah, I'm, you know, God says, well, you're, you're way back over here, back way, way, but anyway, <clears throat> that little tiny circle, that's the first heaven. 
This outer part, the donut, is the second heaven. Who dwells in the second heaven? The powers of darkness, the devil. Then here's the third heaven up here. You're trying to get your prayers from this little dot in here through the second heaven. And you notice how attractive the second heaven is, how attractive the things of darkness are, how you, you just, well, let's just dwell right here for just a little bit. Let's just have a snack. It won't hurt anything. It won't hurt you to have a little snack. And the devil will always keep something kind of going to distract you from, from this prayer. How, how can I get from this, this little, this earth, my prayers up to there? Well, in uh, Genesis 28, and it's right there in 12, but it's above it and below it, Jacob is leaving his father and his mother so that, you know, at, at their request, so that he can go back to her people and find a suitable mate because the parents didn't want him to get one of the local girls because they were all caught up in the things of the second heaven, devil worship and stuff like that. I want you to go back and find a nice girl. Well, he laid down that night. He was on the trip and he laid down. He put his head on a rock and he went to sleep and he had a dream. And he dreamed that he saw a ladder and we refer to it as Jacob's Ladder, and it extended from the earth all the way into heaven. Well, really, it extended all the way to the third heaven because he saw angels ascending and descending. Now, how do we know that that's a reliable story that, that we can base anything on? In, uh, in John 1, 51, when Jesus was calling his disciples... He called uh, Nathaniel, and uh, Nathaniel says, well, you know, how do, how do I know you're the son of God? He says, before, before Philip told you about me, I saw you under the fig tree. He says, oh, you are the Messiah. He says, Nathaniel, you ain't seen nothing yet. He says, you're going to see the heavens open up and angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. He was, he was given credence to the story in Genesis. Now, I believe this ladder is like this straw. It pushes all the way down, and it, it touches the earth, and it touches the third heaven. Those angels ascend and descend without any blockage from the powers of darkness. Now, how do we know that the powers of darkness can affect your prayers and what's going on in the heavenlies? Daniel 10 tells us Daniel was praying and Gabriel came to him and he said that uh, the first day that you prayed, your prayers were heard in heaven. But for 21 days, I've had to fight powers of darkness, the prince of Persia. See, there are, there are demonic powers assigned to each area. He says, it got so bad, I had to get Michael, the archangel, to come and help me to bring that answer. Well, there are certain portals, portals on the earth where your prayers, like this straw, there's, there's no, the, the demonic powers can't get in between what's going from earth to heaven and from heaven to earth. Okay, what is, how does that affect us? All right, here we are. Seven billion people on earth. We got this hotline going from earth to the third heaven. Angels ascending and descending. You know, for us, you know, it's a long distance call, but if you call from Israel, it's a local call. When, when they pray, it's a local call. But anyway, one of, one of our guides told us that.
many, many years ago, I went to Pastor Bob and I said, Pastor Bob, I feel led that, you know, you and I should get together and we should pray together. Well, what happened is we came down here every night for five years. And at the end of five years, Pastor Bob says, well, you know, I feel like, I feel like we, we can wrap it up. And we had some, some speakers come in and we had a little, quote, revival. That's, that's how we have revival, you know. You have pe people come in and you, you get revived. Well, uh, then we had a, a, a spot there where we didn't, uh, we, did, we didn't pray, you know, together with each other. And I decided I wanted to learn to play the drums. So I got this video, and I started listening to it. And I'd come over here, and I'd, I'd play, play the drums. You know? Well, I'd beat on them, you know. And every time I came over, Pastor Bob would show up. I guess he came to check on what the noise was. But uh, so when he'd come in, you know, I'd quit. And he says, well, go ahead, go ahead. I, I just, you know, I saw you over here. And, and uh, so I'd walk. I don't know how he saw me walking, but I'd walk over. And uh, I was too embarrassed to try to practice in front of him, you know. So, so we just, he said, you know, I thought, you know, I thought since you're over here, we'd go ahead and, and pray. Well, I finally put up the drumsticks and another, another five-year uh, prayer went on, you know. And during that prayer, most of that time it was just him and me, and then later on some other people joined us. But right down here at this altar, God showed us that there was an opening in the heavens, a portal where our prayers went up, and came down. Now, I never saw any angels going up and coming down, but I'm open to that. But most people that have seen angels are usually down on their face. But I believe this, this is one of the spots. This is not the only spot. I know the, the Western Wall in Jerusalem is a spot, you know, because they pray 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can't pray that much and, and God not respond. But those... Those two periods of time when we prayed down here, I believe God made an opening. God, God made an opening so that when we prayed, it was kind of like sending something express, you know? I, I really believe that. And even now, when I, we pray on Wednesday nights and on uh, Sunday morning. And when I pray here, it's a different anointing than when I pray anywhere else. I mean, it's just, I pray things here. I get revelation when I'm praying. I get revelation when Pastor Bob's praying. I get revelation when other people are praying that I don't get, you know, when I'm at home praying. And I'm not saying you have to come here to pray, but I'm just saying there's a sensitivity to God's ear when prayers come from this place. It, it's amazing. It is amazing. So, and, and, and it's not that, that we can go and say, I'm going to make a portal. I believe, it, I believe it's kind of like this. When God opens up that, you know, if you took this straw and you pushed it down through a, a, a real donut, you'd get some of that donut caught in there, right? I believe God just... Blows all that out. And that, and that passageway stays open for prayers to go up, for answers to come down. Now you, you take that, <clears throat> excuse me, you take that with a grain of salt and you believe it or you not, don't believe it. But I'm telling you what I've experienced when I come here and pray and when I pray in other places. And you know, it, you don't even have to be here, but you know, there can be somebody miles away, and you can make that connection with them. And, and those prayers where two or three agree is touching anything, you know? So I, I would encourage you to pray, because the Bible encourages you to pray. And I would, uh, I would pray that 
everybody here has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I thank you for your time. Very, very good. Thank you. Amen. A good analogy. If you want to make a canal between here and there, Jesus says something about when you pray, go to your closet. I come in my house sometimes, I say, Susan! I don't hear a thing. Susan, I'm home! Don't hear a thing. And then, boing! <laughs> Open the closet, and there's Susan. I come in and I don't see it. Oh, the rapture's come and I'm left behind. <laughs> Seriously, we've had people uh, actually call the house. <clears throat> and uh, Susan would answer the phone. And uh, Susan said, yes, what did you want? <clears throat> oh, nothing. I just want to see if you were still here. They knew if Susan was still here, that rapture hadn't happened yet. <laughs> and I know you live that type of life too, don't you? Huh? Amen. Somebody else want to share? Not only one time now, one at a time. Anybody else? All clear? Okay. Praise the Lord. All right. Aren't you glad we're family? Amen. See, they don't do that in traditional churches. <laughs> but we're not traditional churches. We're the body of Christ Amen. on the earth. We're a family. We're the family of God. And all of us are brothers and sisters of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Look to somebody and say, hey, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look to, to the left. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. Yeah. All right, just in case, you know, just rise to your feet. Come on, put some up there now where they can get this crowd mixed up here and, and, and get them to love one another and just mm, make a big stew. Are you ready? Get to your feet now. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Hey, one, two, three, boom. Go to somebody and say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Hey, come on now, church. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, like man. Yeah, yeah. I just want to praise you. Uh huh. I just want to praise you. Yeah, you got it. Uh huh. You broke the chains, now I can't live. Praise the Lord. All right, let's pray. Are you ready? Father, we want to thank you now for this opportunity that we can share the Word of God and fellowship one with another. We know that. That does the Father's heart very good when he sees his children loving one another, taking care of one another, and honoring one another above themselves. For Christ came not to please himself. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done for every individual on this earth. We thank you that we can say that we believe that you are our Savior and our Lord. You are our God. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And you started it, you started a good work in us, and you will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. And we, our faith is in you, that you are changing us from glory to glory. How? By the Spirit of God. Thank you now. As we hear the word, and we know that as we hear, faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. I want to read that first scripture. You can look at the board. It's in St. John 3.15. And I'm really calling this message in order. The question is, why did Christ come to this earth? Why was he born? Why do we celebrate Christmas? Well, we know it, it was the time that Christ came as a little baby. But he's not no little baby now. He's seated at the right hand side of the Father. And we thank you that he intercedes for us every day. And he's our Lord and our Savior. So, but why did he come? He came in order that everyone who believes in him, who cleaves to him, trusts in him, relies on him, may not perish. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You will not perish because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look what it says. But have eternal life, actually live forever. Everybody say, I'm going to live forever. How can you say that? Because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I believe. I believe. He is my Savior. He is my, Savior. My, Lord. my Lord. He's my life. He's my, life. He's my, everything. He's my everything. He came, he came. In, order in order that I might that I have, have eternal life. Eternal life. I, have I have eternal life right now. right now. You will never die. He annulled death. That's what he said. He annulled it. It's gone. Finished. Now you meditate on the word of God. You break the word of God down. Take up one verse. You can just take that one verse. In order. He came in order that we might become his children. He came in order that we might be brothers and sisters in the Lord. He came in order that we might have all our sins. I said all our sins forgiven, removed as far as the east is from the west. He was born in Bethlehem in order that he might die on that cross and he might pay the price. And he paid the price. He gave his life. And God took that sacrifice. Once and for all, our sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future. Didn't hear one amen. amen. Are you out there? Okay, I want to just check and see if you're out there. Say, I'm forgiven. God has cleansed me from half of my sins. Oh, you got it. Oh, all, A, L, L, all. You can't get no more cleaner than that. See, <clears throat> see, the gospel was preached to the Israelites, but it didn't do them no good. You know why? Because they did not mix faith with it. You'll find that in chapter 4, Hebrews 4, 2. In fact, put that on the board now. Everybody say, I believe. Well, what do you believe? <laughs> well, I believe that Christ came in order that I might be reconciled back to God. There's nothing between God and me. Everything's clear between God and me. I have no grudges. I have no ax to grind. I have, I mean, I'm clean inside. You know how I found out that? I read the Bible. And the blood has cleansed us from all sin. Look what it says. Boy, that's small writing, isn't it? <laughs> For indeed we have had that glad tithing. Now Paul is talking about the Israelites here. They have had the same gospel preached of God proclaimed to us just as truly as they, the Israelites of old, did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them. Why? Somebody tell me. They did not mix faith with it. So I've, I've had people set up under my preacher, and I preach the gospel, <clears throat> and they still don't believe. You know why? Because they didn't mix faith with it. But God gives every man a measure of faith. So you can believe or not believe. And if you don't believe, you choose not to believe. In fact, if you don't believe the gospel, you're saying to God, you're a liar. You read that in the Bible. People say, well, I don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You just called God a liar. It's quiet in here. Christ came in order. Everybody say, in order? In order. 
that I might have a relationship with God Almighty. That's a powerful thing. Look what it says now. Let's finish that. With the leaning of in the entire personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness by those who hear it, neither were they united in faith with the, with the ones Joshua and Caleb that heard it, and they did believe. See, so everybody say, I'm a believer? I'm a believer. Oh, I tell you, it's wonderful to become a believer. I believe the Word of God. Well, Bob, how do, how do you know? Well, you see, the Spirit of God reveals things to us. So many people need to understand, God is not dead. He's alive, and He reveals things to us. How? By His Spirit. Everything that Jesus did when he was on this earth, he did as he heard his father tell him what to do. God reveals. Yes, I've read the Bible. I believe the word of God. God has given me faith to believe and I believe. But I've lived now in this, in this walk with God 60 years. And all through that 60 years, God has revealed many things to me. How, Bob? By his spirit. Now, i got a question for you. Are you listening to the Spirit? Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church? That's what the Bible says. You should be able to hear what the Spirit is saying. How many in here knows when you're hungry? See your hands. How many in here knows when you're thirsty? Oh, you hear this voice. I'm, you're thirsty. You're hungry. You're tired. How many knows when you're tired? How many knows when you're refreshed? How many know when you've been a bad boy and a bad girl? Yeah, you know, don't lie to me. You, you know, see, there's things that we know. You know why we know it? Because the Holy Spirit has revealed it unto us. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. But he has what? Revealed it unto us. How? By his spirit. I'll be preaching on that Wednesday night. So important to, to follow Christ's life. And see, every time he heard the spirit, he moved. Every time he did what he saw the spirit do, he did, he did, he did. And the Bible says we've been anointed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's our God. He directs us. He talks to us. When's the last time you heard from the Holy Spirit? Not trying to put you on the spot, but I'm just jarring your memory. How many is the last time your stomach talked to you? <laughs> when was the last time your stomach talked to you? <laughs> Talking right now, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> yeah, you can hear that real clear, can't you? Well, we should be able to hear the Holy Spirit just as clear. The last time you realized in, 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 in your, you, 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 you were thirsty. And you heard this voice says, I'm thirsty. No, you didn't hear no voice. You just knew. Instinct, instinct, instinct. Now listen to me, children. I'm trying to teach you something here this morning. Christ came in order that we might become the temple of God and receive his spirit in us, that his spirit would direct and guide us in our everyday life. You know why this building is here? I heard from God. You know why we have this land? I heard from God. I remember the first time I heard from God. I wasn't even a Christian at that time. And Susan worked at Western Union. And she was typing this stuff out sending these telegrams to Atlanta. She got up, walked across the floor, and I looked at her, I said, and I heard, I, I heard this voice that had no sound to it. I, I said, it had no sound to it. And it said, she's gonna be your wife. No sound. No sound. And yet you know it's God. 
Oh, my goodness, if, if I didn't hear his voice, if I didn't realize he's alive and real and he talks with me and he tells me things and I talk to him every day, it's so exciting. And if I could just get most of the people of God to understand that he's alive, he's not dead. Now, listen to this. He came, yes, he died at Calvary. You, you read Luke 4, you want to hear the Christmas story. But I want to tell you, he came in order that we might have a relationship with God. Put uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 up there. For Christ the Messiah himself died for sins once for all. One sacrifice took care of all the sins. Past, present, future. One sacrifice. No need for any more sacrifices. Powerful thought right there. The righteous for the unrighteous. And who was the righteous? Jesus. And who was the unrighteous? Who was the unrighteous? We were. The just for the unjust. Who was the just? Jesus. Who was the unjust? Us at that time. The innocent for the guilty. Who was the innocent one? Jesus. Who was the guilty one? We were. Why did he do that? In order that he might bring us to God. <coughs> Powerful thought. Sometimes sandwiches, so much as sandwiches, just one verse of scripture. In order to bring us to God. See, we look at uh, becoming a Christian many times from our viewpoint. But you know, when you lost something, how many of you wants it back? Hmm? Yeah, all of us do. God lost something. He lost our fellowship. You know, I have three daughters. One of them here lately is not calling Susan to me as much as she used to. I sort of miss that. But see, God talks to me and say, Bob, see, that's the way it is when you don't call me and talk to me and fellowship with me. Now you're feeling what I'm feeling, Bob. And God will allow you to go through certain experiences to feel what God feels. And he wants all of his children to be around him and to communicate with him and talk with him. It's so exciting when we understand that Christ came to this earth in order that we might be brought back to God the Father. See, God, the Father, lost something in all of this. I love to have fellowship with my, my wife. We, sometimes we'll just sit on the couch and hold hands, and, and there's no, you don't hear nobody talking. And we're just holding hands, and it's just vibration. There, there's a message being sent uh, from me to her to her to me by just holding hands. That's why we shake hands. Transmitting something, something good. The Bible says, kiss the sisters with a holy kiss. You know the Bible don't say that. <laughs> it, it says, greet the brother with a holy kiss. The communication, transferring love, invisible Power being transmitted one to another. How many's ever been outside and it's really cold? And you get sort of huddled up to one another. You know what you're doing? You're transmitting warmth to one another. And I guarantee if it's real cold in here, we'd all come together and just come together and we could create an atmosphere of, of warmth. Are you out there, church? See, we, we transmit things to one another. I can tell if you're mad at me. I can tell if you've got something against me. 
because the flow, the flow stops. Can't you? How many here can tell when, you, when your wife is mad at you? Look at her, 100%. How many here? <laughs> well, beyond, that's true, we can. See, if we wake up to realize we're spirit beings. We're not, we, we don't have a spirit. We are a spirit living in a body and have a soul. So in, Christ came to this earth. We're celebrating Christmas. And he came and everything that, that, that he did on this earth was prophesied many years ago. His, 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 his time to come. It told us in Micah uh, chapter 5 verse 2 that he would be born in Bethlehem. And it came to pass. If you doubt anything in the scriptures, just read what was prophesied way before it happened. Way before it happened, it was prophesied. All the way down through the Old Testament. And when Christ came, he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled everything that was prophesied in the word of God. And it was prophesied hundreds of years ago. And he fulfilled it all. And when you can see that in the scriptures, you say, I am a believer. Are you out there, church? Man, it is so powerful. And when Christmas comes, I'm always excited about Christmas because I'm, I'm looking under the tree for my favorite little whatever they, what did they get me? How many remembers your first bicycle? That hadn't been that far, has it, the bike, huh? You know why I remember my first bicycle? I worked for it. <laughs> yeah, I was 12 years old. I do all these odd jobs around the neighborhood, make my money. I made, I saved up $21 and I bought the first bicycle. That was it. This is it. I got it. Man, I rode that bicycle all over everywhere. And I put those little cardboard things with the, with the, on my bicycle, on the, on the spokes, you'd go, boop, 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 boop. I remember that. Huh? Or, glory, it was glory. <laughs> but you know, I've got that little childlike spirit in me now. I get all excited when I hear from God. Sometimes Susan me, you know, she's hearing from God, and I'm hearing from God, and, 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 and it just, it just uh, energizes you, you know, when you get that revelation knowledge uh, that he's talking to you personally, and it brings life into you. That's why I just love to read the scriptures. When I, when I uh, was listen, uh, watching, uh, not watching, but reading uh, John 3, uh, 3 uh, 15, verse 15, in order, in order, and that just jumped out. It became alive to me in order. Christ did all that he did in order that we might be brought back to the Father and have fellowship with him 24-7. Woo! Glory! Some of you don't understand, but that's right. You hang around, it's gonna, you're going to catch it. All right, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to jar some of you now. You ready to be jarred? Phil, I'm going to jar you. You're a solid Christian. You won't get mad at me. You remember when you fell in love with uh, Helen? Did you hear a voice? How did you know that you loved her? <laughs> you saw stars? <laughs> see, there's so many things invisible that people are missing. They can only see the tangible. They can only see the natural world. But see, once you're born again, you're able to see and understand and comprehend the spiritual things you can't even see. How can I explain to you how much I love my wife, Susan? Phil, explain to us how much you love your wife. You can't, but you do. Do you still get geese bumps? <laughs> I told you I'd put you on the carpet. I can look at Susan and get geese bumps. On top of geese bumps. 
I remember the first time I, uh, I went by and I picked her up and she was working and I had this 1941 Plymouth two-door, skirts on it. Back in those days, it was that like that. You put the back end down, now they put it like this. Man, I ran out, opened that door, she got in there. Man, I got up in there and I looked over there. I can't tell you what I was feeling. Some of you need to get that feeling back. Come on, old folks. I'm trying to jar you. Get that feeling back. I am almost 84, and I get goosebumps when I see my wife. Just looking at Susan vibrates me, excites me. And nobody is saying anything. What's being transmitted here? What's going on? Well, that's the way it is with God in me. He loves me. You know, that's what, did you know that's what everybody really wants? You know what you're looking for? I will tell you what you are looking for. Love. And you found it, didn't you? Right there? <laughs> How do y'all know you? You, 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 you just, you, 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 you. see, I know I'm jarring some of you. They're planning on getting married next year. They want me to tie the knot. People ask me, would you marry us? No, I'm already married. I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've been married for 63 years. I ain't able to get married again, but I will perform the marriage. Folks, I want you to see that this Christmas, what are you feeling? What are you sensing? What do you know about God? Are, are you being saturated in his love? Are you excited about what the Lord has done? Now, I ain't fussing at you, but I am jarring you if you'll stop and think and realize that he came and he was born as a little baby in order that he might grow up and become the one sacrifice that would take the sins of the world away. And he died for you and for me that we might have eternal life. So when I think of Christmas, yes, I think about him being born in the manger. And I've read all the scriptures about it. But he died in order to bring me back to the Father. Whew. I want you to see it from God's viewpoint here now. You know, it's natural for all of us to see things from our viewpoint. When Susan and me first got married, and we're we going to save money. See, we're going to save our money. I was in the Air Force, you know, and we're going to save our money. So we, I left her here, and she had a good job at Western Union and making money, you know. And uh, I'm in the Air Force, and I think they gave me something, not much. I can't remember it, but they, they gave me some money, too. And that was our objective, you know. She's going to be here, and, 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 and I was going to be there, read my lips. We got married on the 28th of November. We spent two weeks uh, on our honeymoon, went to Florida. Come back, I left her here. I went back to Delaware, New Year's Eve. I called Susan. I said, honey... Pack your bags, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> I'm going to bring you where daddy is. And she said, oh, wonderful. <laughs> you mean I got to give up my job making money? She didn't say, it. she was so excited that she was going to come back to her first love, her husband, and I come back, and we packed our, I had a 1941, uh, not Plymouth, but 1940, no, I'm sorry, back up a little bit, 1949, two-door Ford, we packed our belongings in that, had room left over in the back seat. But you see, I wanted to be with her. That was my heart's desire, to be with my Susie. And that is God's desire for all that he wants to have his children brought back to him. See, we got to see it from God's viewpoint. 
And if I was, say, I was God, he would say, Phil, I love you, son. I'm so proud of you, son. Spencer, I'm so proud of you. Even though you trip me up once in a while. I'm <laughs> now, look at my eyes. I am proud of you. You're my child. And I sent my son in order that you can come back into my presence now and spend time with me 24-7. See it from God's viewpoint. See it from God's viewpoint. And not just our own viewpoint. God sent Jesus to be born in Bethlehem to bring us back to the Father. You read the, 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 the parable on the, on, the, on the prodigal son. Oh, when I read that about the prodigal son, the father, I could see him just out there on the front porch waiting, waiting for his son, looking for his son. And he saw his son. You know, he had to, the son had to come to the end of himself. And how many of you know sometimes we have to come to the end of ourselves and, and realize that the priority, the one very thing that I know that beats God's heart is he wants me back home with him. And the prodigal son finally was coming back, spent everything he had, just stinking like hogs. And the father saw him and he jumped off that porch and he ran to his son and kissed him. And had, they had a feast for God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life no not in these old bodies here but in glorified bodies with hair on the head we got to see it from the father's viewpoint so remember, in order, in order that God might give us his righteousness as we put our faith in Christ, he gives us his righteousness where we can come right into his presence and say, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. Susan and me have dealt with many people over the years, and we have found that... Um, I remember this, I'll just share this one story about this young lady. There, just, there, was, there was something that, she, just, some, she said, something's missing in my life. And she finally realized that God showed her her father. She didn't know where her father was. And she had a desire, Daddy, where are you? Daddy, where are you? And she came to Susan and me for ministry, and we talked with her and, and everything. And she wanted to touch base with her father. Where is he at? So she began to search. And today, I think there are various ways you can search and look up your relatives. But she found him and, and, and communicated with him. And he said, I was looking for you. I was looking for you. And they got together. And now she felt, Pastor Bob, you know, when Dad and me got together, something was complete in him and something was complete in me. I finally feel, it's hard to explain, it's spiritual, but I feel whole. Abba, Father. And God is looking for his children all over this world. And he sent his son, yes, born in a manger, in order that he could find his children and bring them back to himself. We have to see and experience and understand God's love in all of this. God loves you. Yeah, but you know, I did, forget about it. That's been dealt with. Sin has been dealt with at Calvary. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Sin shall not have dominion over you. That's what the Bible says. I'm not saying you can't sin, but I'm saying if you do, we have an advocate with the Father, and God has made provisions. And you know when the... Uh,
prodigal son came back. I often picture this like this. Well, son, you finally you spent all your money. You know, the father didn't have the attitude that the oldest son had. The father could say, you know, you spent all your money, you come back and you want some more soup, don't you? You want some more my inheritance. Well, you ain't getting nothing. That ain't what, that, that's not God. That's not God. God is a forgiving God. God is a restoring God because he loves you. You've got to put yourself in there and realize it's you that he's talking about. It's you is the reason why he came to this earth as a little baby. You and me are the reason why we celebrate Christmas and thanking him. Because the Bible says he came to seek out those that were lost and to save them and bring us back to the Father. And now we feel whole. I remember, and I want to share this with you, and some of you are still searching. You don't know about the hunger inside. You've, you've given your life to Christ. You, you know you're a Christian, but there's still a hunger in you. And I remember when God showed me the Son, and then I had the experience with the Holy Ghost, and then I had an experience with the Father. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And all three of those experiences, I became more fuller, more understanding, more fulfilled. And if you read Colossians chapter 2, it talks about the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You know the Son? You've experienced the power of the Holy Ghost? Have you really experienced God's love of how much he loves you and that he wants you every day in his life to walk with you and to fellowship with you? You know... How many ever experienced loneliness? Let me see your hands. Loneliness. Sometimes I, I think, Lord, what, what, what would it be without Susan? I mean, who could I stick my cold feet to at night? <laughs> oh, y'all don't do that? I need. I can teach you all a lot of things. What would it be like? I'd have to get up in the morning and fix my own coffee. You know, she she uh, takes all my clothes. You, how many do you think I look pretty good? How many do you think I look pretty bad? <laughs> Pray for me. <clears throat> but she takes all my clothes. It's all fixed. It's laid out on the bed. Everything I need. Everything's laid out. She dresses me. Because I'd be here in my overalls, combat boots. <laughs> but she dresses me, combs my hair, and pours in the love as she does it. Every hair, every hair on my head is, 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 is has love of Susan in it. That's why that's why it looks so good. You know, see, I, I, I'm telling you, some of you women don't know how to be a wife. You, you're ready, aren't you? <laughs> We're going to have a council after we eat. <laughs> Susan fixes my meals, washes my clothes, takes care of all of that. She has the checkbook. I, don't, I just ask every once in a while, what we got in the checkbook, honey? She said, I'll take care of it. It's okay. She writes out all the checks. Well, what do you do, Bob? I eat what she fixes. I, we I wear what she puts out on the, on, the, on, the, on the bed. What else do you want me to do? <laughs> no, I have my chores. I want you to know that. And we learned that a long time ago. I have my avenue of chores, and she has her avenue of chores, you know. But getting back to the Father, fellowship with him every day. Christ came to restore us back to the Father. He's not mad at you. God's not mad at you. Somebody told me 
this, and I thought it was so tremendous. And, but I'm not going to tell you who's told me this, but I appreciate it, son. <laughs> <coughs> he said, Pastor Bob, sometimes I think about when I'm at my worst. I mean, I just don't like myself. I'm struggling in this forgiveness thing, and I don't like myself. And then he thinks about, but God loves me. At your worst. He loves us at our worst. And if you can grab that, when you're at your worst, has not changed his love. I know that by experience. I have three daughters. Oh, three. <laughs> no, it's three, Susan. It's three. <laughs> I don't care what they do. They're my children and I love them. One's in her 60s, the other in the late 50s. If they have a need, I provide it. If it's in my dominion to do so. See, you either have it or you don't. And if you let God do the work in you, oh my goodness, God begin a good work in us. He's going to, he's going to, God the Father has begun a good work in us. He is going to continue that work until the coming of the Lord. Put your faith in God. Now I have grandchildren. And I love them. Do they do everything you like? No, read my lips. <laughs> but I love them. And I give my life for them. I have four great-grandchildren. And I love them. I, I, I try to do, show no partiality. But you know, some kids need more attention than others. Have you found that to be true, parents? Some children need more attention. It doesn't mean that you don't love the others. I watch some of the kids around here, and, and uh, I need a volunteer. Rick, would you come up and volunteer? Appreciate it, son. <laughs> and, and, and if you notice some of the kids, and, and dad, dad is saying, you all, you all see that, and they... they, they they just all over dad. <laughs> How many of you see the kids do that? They just get trying to get, get dad's attention. Yeah. Yeah. They got it. <laughs> <laughs> Take our picture. <laughs> but some wives are trying to get attention of daddy. Preach it, Bob, I believe it will. And some of you are trying to get my attention. Because we're human beings and we want to know that we count and, and we do count. And, and God loves us and we love one another here. Fellowship. This ain't this ain't some religious organization. This is the body of Christ. We're, 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 we're members one of another. And when you hurt, I hurt. That's true Christianity. And all through the Bible, you'll see it. Love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said. Love one another as I have loved you. I believe it. I know I've read it many times. <sighs> Turn to that person next to us. I love you. <laughs> that was easy for you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go back there and we're going to, we're going to have a, a, a celebration. And, and let me tell you who's going to be back there. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and you and, 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 you and me. And we're all going to have a, a time together, fellowshipping together. 
Don't be mad at yourself anymore. God ain't mad at you. God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. Back to God the Father. God, I said God was in Christ reconciling all of us back to himself. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It, all of that in, is in there. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that we walk together, we sing together, we work together, we carry out the gospel together. We are your family on this earth. And Christ came in order that God would have a family because every father desires a family. And we are your family, Father. And we thank you that Christ brought us back to you and we belong to you. And we thank you now for this food that we're about to receive. In Jesus' name we pray.